Hello and welcome to Eastern Roman History. Today I shall be talking about the Strategia system that Constans II implemented that replaced the late Roman military and administrative system in roughly 659 to 662. Constans took advantage of the peace Muir had brokered with him in 659, which secured 365,000 solidi per year, along with 365 horses and 365 slaves. These resources and the tranquility of peace allowed Constans to focus on reforming the fabric of the military and administration of the empire to better cope with its reduced existence and limited resources. This system would last until its reform under Constantine V after the civil war of Artabastos, which would see the eventual final evolution of the thematic system that was fully formed by the year 800. In 659, 20% of the population of the empire had died from the plague of Justinian, which continued to recur long after its first outbreak. The natural recovery of the population after a plague was mitigated by the unrelenting invasions of the Arabs and Sassanids in the 7th century, which killed or displaced thousands of people. This and the many territorial losses force Constans to adapt the empire to its new, limited resources. Constans settled the mobile comitatens armies of Diocletian and Constantine I's making to specific provinces. These five large provinces, Opsikion, Armeniac, Anatolic, Thracian, and the naval Carabissian strategia were given Hellenized names and were commanded by a strategos that had supreme military and civil command over their region. The Opsikion strategia had a count instead of a strategos for unknown reasons. Opsikion headquarters were located at Ancyro. Anatolikon's HQ was at Amorian. The Armeniacon HQ was located at Euciata. Freixikion was likely based at Konye and the Carabissianoi derived from the Greek word for ship, Carabis, was based on Samos. The Strategos was the general of the Strategion. Their immediate subordinates were the Tumarche or Termarchs. They commanded divisions of their soldiers and territory called Terme. The officers under the Termarchs were called Drungiaroi. Each Drungiarios commanded 1,000 soldiers. The soldiers were given land to support themselves and purchase their own equipment and supplies, including horses. Arms, armor and food were stored in a system of warehouses called Apothecae, and these were managed by Komarachiaroi, who went out and supplied the needed materials from the province. These state-owned warehouses were run by private contractors. Constans largely replaced land taxes with poll taxes, since land was now a premium. Soldier pay was halved, and the land grants replaced the Anona Militaris, which had provided soldiers with uniforms, arms, armor, and horses. The thematic soldiers bought their supplies from the Apothecae, paid for by the money they raised from their land and wages. The formatic troops had to muster when summoned, at least once every spring to be inspected, drilled and paid, as well as go on campaign. It is estimated that a fifth of all arable land in Anatolia was owned by formatic soldiers, whose farms and military duties were immediately inherited by their heir. The amount of land given to a formatic soldier was, for a cavalryman, the equivalent of four pounds of gold, about 288 solidi. A marine received the equivalent of two pounds of gold. Infantry received less than both, but the idea was that each man received plenty of land to sustain themselves 
and allow, perhaps even necessitate, the need of tenant farmers, especially when the troops were absent on campaign. The land of these soldiers likely came from the emperor's own estates, and buying land from landowners to evenly distribute the soldiers throughout their provinces. During the reign of Constans, the previous Diocletianic system continued to run civil affairs alongside the Strategia system. They largely regulated the collection of taxes and the franchising of warehouses, while the system was still in its infancy. However, the Strategos effectively replaced the Praces and Prefects as the supreme civil authority in their province. All of this appears to have halved the total cost of the army from 1,453,000 solidi to 727,000 solidi, having dispensed with the state's need to pay for soldiers' uniforms, arms, horses, etc., costing perhaps as much as over half a million solidi in total. Treadgold expertly summarizes the importance of the reign of Constance II and his creation of what would become the Fermata system. Warren Treadgold, A History of the Byzantine State and Society, page 322. By creating a new military system, he had enabled the empire to pay a large army without the revenues of Syria, Egypt, or even Africa. This reform came none too soon, since his confiscations and exactions toward the end of his reign indicate that the treasury had run very short of money. In the long run, Themes did not only secure the empire's solvency, but allowed the Byzantines to hold Anatolia for the indefinite future. If, as a general, Constans fell short of Heraclius' genius, in administrative insight he surpassed his grandfather. Between them, Constans and Heraclius had held off assaults that would easily have destroyed most states, and might well have overcome even Byzantium's reserves of strength. To those reserves, Constans added soldiers who would fight hard to hold their land, and who would replace themselves indefinitely. As long as the themes lasted, the empire was safe from a repetition of its rapid collapse before the Persians and Arabs earlier in the century. I have been your host, Daniel Maynard. I hope you found this video interesting, and I will see you next time.